friends welcome to my youtube channel in the last video i gave a walkthrough of how to integrate google workspace with aws identity center using saml application in this video i will provide a step by step guide on how to manage groups permissions users across a different aws account before we start the actual configuration keep a note that aws identity center only supports the user synchronization at this moment for groups we need to create them manually or we need to take some additional steps to use aws identity center effectively we should utilize the groups and the permission set effectively so let's get started first start with creating group so for that you can go to aws management console and then identity center and then you can go to groups so as you can see there are no groups created here also there is no option to create a group from management console itself now also you can see there is a pop up message over there which says your identity source is currently configured as a external identity provider which is to be configured or rather we integrate google workspace with aws sso and to create new groups or edit their membership we have to do this from google console itself earlier aws identity center does not support the group synchronization at this moment so it is only limited to user synchronization now in order to create group we have to use the we have to use the aws cli to create group so before we start let's check how many groups we have so i have opened uh, a terminal and also i have configured the aws cli on my local machine so let's get start with listing how many groups currently we have we also we, we have we have already seen this on google console there are no groups created but let's use a command called aws identity store list groups and then we have to pass a parameter called identity store id we need to pass the identity store id now to get this identity store id you can go to i am identity center again go to dashboard no sir go to settings then uh, from identity source tab you will find the identity store id now copy this store id and you can use this in your cli command now this will return a empty array because there are no groups configured at this moment so let's start and create our first group so in order to create group you have to use the aws cli command which is also mentioned in my blog so i currently we are creating this group so yeah we, we just executed list group command now execute the next command which is identity store create group command so let me just copy this bit we have to pass the identity store id so in my case this is the identity store id you would have a different store id for your account now the next parameter would be display name so the value that you will pass here uh, a new group will be created with same name so in this case i'll create a group called developers and we need to pass one more parameter which is description so read only group for developers and hit enter now you can see the group has been created and we we got a response as group id and the identity store id so exit from here now validate same on the aws console so again i'll go to aws identity center groups and i'll refresh this page now you can see the developer group has been created with the description that we provided now now uh, the next step would be to add user to this developer group so to do that what we can do we have to execute one more cli command because as you can see there is no option to add user directly to this group so i'll go to my blog again so i'll go to my blog again in order to add user to the group 
you have to execute one more CLI command which is this one AWS identity store create group membership and you again you have to pass three parameters identity store ID which we already discussed then the group ID and the member ID now how to get this group ID and member ID I'll show you in a bit so let me just copy the first part then identity store ID so this is my identity store ID the next parameter is group ID now to get group ID you can go to to get group ID you can go to I am identity center again groups and open the group in which you want to add a specific user so in my case I have only one group created which is developer so I'll go inside the developer and I'll unfold the general tab now here you can see the group ID you can copy this group ID and pass it as a argument here now the next parameter is the member ID so what you can do you can copy copy the third parameter which is member ID you can copy member ID and then the user ID to get user ID again you can go to I am identity center users and then unfold this general information so I have only one user which is synced with Google workspace which is synced with Google workspace which is admin and display name is my name so I'll open this general information and and I'll copy this user ID now I'll pass this as a parameter for this command and execute this command now you can see as a response you will get the membership ID and the identity store ID cool so we are good now if you go to groups again open developers and let me just refresh this page you will find that one user has been added successfully to this group and now whatever permission we assign to this group the this user will have access to those resources on AWS now the user has been added successfully to developer group so let's see how to create permission set and assign permission to groups user to AWS account so for that go to I am identity center again go to permission sets so before we create permission set let's understand what is permission set so permission set defines the level of access that user have to their assigned AWS account something to note that the name of permission set appears in the AWS access portal as a role user who are assigned multiple AWS permission set can sign in to AWS access portal and choose account followed by the role that AWS created from assigned permission set so let's create permission set and define policies so when you click on create permission set you you will see that there are two types of permission set available one is the predefined permission set and second one is custom permission set so predefined permission set is nothing but a group group of policies which are defined by AWS which you can assign directly to permission set second option is custom permission set which allow you to select AWS managed policy or you can define your own policy and you can add it to the custom permission set also you can add inline policy or you can set a permission boundary but when you select a custom permission set there's a limitation you can add only 10 policies to a one custom permission set so that's a limitation on the custom policy so as a part of this tutorial let's create a simple custom permission set to assign RDS read only access to permission set so I'll select the AWS managed policy because it's readily available there and I'll search for Amazon RDS read only access so let me just expand this so this is the read only permission which I'll assign if you want to add your custom policy then you can define or you can attach policy here if you want to add any inline policy you can add there and same for permission set boundary but as a part of this tutorial I'll be assigning only RDS read only permission to my permission set so I'll select AWS manage policy and click next on the next page you have to define few things so very first is the name of permission set again remember that the name that you specify for permission set would appear as a available role on the next page you have to enter few details of permission set so first one is the permission set name 
the name that you specify for permission set would appear as an available role after login. Second one is the description. Third one is the session duration. So session duration is nothing but the length of time a user can log in before console logged them out for, uh, from the session. Now let's enter these details. So I'll simply mention RDS read only permission. Description is optional. I'll leave this blank. And then as a session duration, I'll select one hour for this demo, but you can select one hour, two hour, four, eight, 12, or you can also define the custom duration. Real estate will, will leave this blank. Again, this is the optional thing. If you want to add any tags, you can uh, enter tag details here and now click next. So review your permission set and hit create. Awesome. Now our permission set is created. Now if I go inside this permission set, I can see the only policy attached with this permission is Amazon read only access. Now let's see how you can assign this permission set to AWS account. So for that, I'll go to AWS account. So at this moment, I have only one account created under my organization, which, uh, which is this one. Now I'll select this AWS account. Now here you can see we have we we have one dashboard available where you can see what users or group have access to this particular account and also what permission set we have assigned so at this moment the, no user or group has been assigned or permission set is also not assigned to this account so let's go ahead and assign user so i'll click on the assign user or group button here as you know we created this developer group and i would want this group to have access to my aws account so i can select group also if you want to add the individual user you can go to user tab and you can assign user from user list directly but in but for this tutorial i want to add groups so i'll select the group name and then click next on the second page you have to assign the permission set so at this moment we have only one permission set available so i'll select the rds read only permission which has access to which has read only access to uh, rds service only now click next again review the details we we would want to assign developer group for for this particular aws account and the permission set which is rds read only now submit so this will take few seconds to assign those developer group and permission set to AWS account and now we are ready. So as you can see under users and group we can see the developer group has been added added, and the user who belongs to developer group can access these AWS account. Now what services what all services user can access on this particular account is defined by the permission set. So here you can see we have defined the read only access to RDS service only. So this is the permission that we have given. Now let's verify the changes that we have done. So what I will do, I'll go to again settings. So currently I'm logged in as a IAM user, which is the older way of authentication in AWS. But um, let's, let's go to settings and copy the AWS access portal URL from here under the identity source and open this URL in new tab. So this will authenticate user using the Google workspace that we configured and it will allow you to log in. So this will take few seconds to load. So as I mentioned while defining permission set that you will see a role created with the name of the permission set that we have given. So as you can see, so this is my AWS account and uh, I've only given access to my user for to access only this particular AWS account. So hence, uh, hence on this particular page, I'll see only one account. And now if you open or if you unfold these detail, you'll find the role created. Now you can click on this one. So you can click on the role which is created with the name of permission set which will initiate a session using which you can access the AWS account and you will have only read only permission to the RDS service. So let's get validate that. So now as you can see I am logged in using role RDS read only permission 
and this is my username now if i go to let's say s3 i should get an error because i do not have permission to access s3 bucket so at this moment we do not have any bucket so if i go to buckets so you will see i do not have permission to access bucket because while defining permission set we have added only rds service there so now let's go to the rds service and see perfect so now i'm on the rds dashboard page as uh, as I mentioned, so I will be given RDS read-only permission, so I can access the RDS instance with read-only permission. Uh, so since there are no database instance, and also I'm not getting the uh, permission error on this particular page, since I have only read-only permission, so I, I, I could not create any database. And if I do so, then it will create, it will throw an, it will throw an error. So yeah this is working as expected so the permission set that we have defined is working as expected and the user is able to access only limited account and then limited services which is, which which is given by the aws administrator i hope this video has been informative for you and thank you so much for watching till the end see you in the next video